Good morning, and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are in good health. We ask all present to please respect the instructions given by our parish ushers and the guidelines in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers, maintaining a social distance of two meters, and wearing face masks at all times within the church. At the time of Holy Communion, further instructions will be given, and at the end of Mass, we ask that you please follow the ushers' instructions for exiting from the church. Our presider today is Archbishop Hunt. Our processional hymn is 475, God Whose Glory Reigns Eternal. Please stand for the processional hymn. God whose glory reigns eternal, spanning space as well as time, show us signs in seed and kernel, life potential, hope sublime, grant us insight of this earth. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. I invite you, along with your own intentions today, to remember in your prayers Father Fred Brown of our diocese. Today he celebrates his 32nd anniversary of priestly ordination. And in the first reading today, Sirach speaks to us of the wonders of God, that we may worthily give God thanks for all the wonderful things he does for us. Let us pause to call to mind his goodness and to ask forgiveness for our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. 
a reading from the book of Sirach. I will now call to mind the works of the Lord and will declare what I have seen. By the word of the Lord, his works are made and all his creatures do his will. The sun looks down on everything with its light and the work of the Lord is full of his glory. The Lord has not empowered even his holy ones to recount all his marvelous works, which the Lord the Almighty has established so that the universe may stand firm in his glory. He searches out the abyss and the human heart. He understands their innermost secrets. For the Most High knows all that may be known. He sees the signs of the age. He discloses what has been and what is to be, and he reveals the traces of hidden things. No thought escapes him, and nothing is hidden from him. He has set in order the splendors of his wisdom. He is from all eternity one and the same. Nothing can be added or taken away, and he needs no one to be his counselor. How desirable are the works of the Lord, and how sparkling they are to see. All these things live and remain forever. Each creature is preserved to meet a particular need. All things come in peers, one opposite the other, and he has made nothing incomplete. Each supplements the virtues of the other. Who could ever tire of seeing his glory? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The words of the responsorial psalm. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen as his heritage. Who hope in his steadfast love 
Let your steadfast love, O oh Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen as his heritage. Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the man who was blind, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately Bartimaeus regained his sight and followed Jesus on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. I was once stationed with a priest who had a bizarre or sort of warped sense of humor, and uh, he told me a story about he took a group of young people to the Canadian National Exhibition one day, and part of the fun that he had there was he got these young people with him to stand and look at a garbage can, and they all stood and were looking at it, and then he'd watch to see how other people would see them looking at it and come and look and try to decide what was so interesting about it. He got a big kick out of that. In the first reading today, Sirach uh, is, is trying to get us interested. He's trying to get us to look at the great wonders of the Lord. He talks about how he's declaring what he has seen. He talks about a God who reveals the traces of hidden things. How desirable are all his works, how sparkling they are to see. And he goes on to talk about how they all come in pairs, one opposite the other. Each supplements the, vir the virtues of the other. Sometimes I think when we see people that are opposite us, we don't see them as complimenting us. They don't see, us, see it as supplementing uh, their virtues for ours. Uh, but he's looking at all this in a very positive light. And he's seeing the glory of God and he wants to share it with us. Who could ever tire of seeing his glory, Sirach says. In the gospel today, we see Bartimaeus, who's blind. Uh, at one point, he had sight, obviously, uh, but now he has lost it. And when he hears that Jesus is coming, 
he asked Jesus to give him back his sight. I think there are times in all of our lives when things look pretty gloomy for us, uh, when we find it hard to see the good things. And at times like that, like Bartimaeus, we should ask the Lord to help us to see with his eyes, to see with the eyes of Sirach, to see the wonders of God, to be able to see the glasses half full rather than half empty. There are times in our lives when it's very difficult for us to focus on the good. And at times like that, we need to turn to the Lord because the Lord wants to heal our blindness. He wants us to be able to see the goodness that is around us and is definitely there, though which at some times we are blind to. As we continue in our Mass today, we celebrate God's goodness and the Lord becomes present for us to receive in the Eucharist. This is one of the great gifts that he gives us, and it is a wonder for our eyes and a wonder for our lives. And it's a wonder that we're invited to point out to others as well. Receiving God's goodness, it's important that we share that good news. That like Sirach, we never tire of looking at the goodness of the Lord, of focusing on it, and of sharing it with others. God bless you. With confidence in God's goodness, let us stand and offer to him our prayers of petition. Let us begin by praying and thanksgiving to the Lord for all the good gifts that he gives to us. Let us ask him to help us that we and all people may today see his glory and rejoice in his goodness. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for our Pope and for all our religious and civil leaders that they may always be open to God's power and goodness working through their ministry as our leaders. For this, we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who for, to, whom, for whom today is a difficult time, uh, those that are struggling with any type of hurt or pain or depression or illness. We pray for them that in the midst of their trials, they may feel God's consolation and grace at work in their lives. For this, we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, that they may have eternal rest with God in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you this morning, both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, for they are offered through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for our joy and the good of all his holy church.
Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the angels we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. And to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Spirit present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of, of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, 
and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son, and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis our Pope, me your unworthy servant, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live forever with you, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, St. Augustine of Canterbury, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, who art in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Thank <laughs> you. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion, a prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, for you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and respectful manner, we ask that you please follow these instructions. Instead of individually replying Amen upon receiving the host, there will be one general attestation of Amen before distribution begins. Please remain standing in your pew until invited forward by an usher. Ensure your face mask is correctly worn before coming forward and maintain a two meter social distance in the communion line. As you approach the front of the line, sanitize your hands before receiving communion. Bow toward the host. In silence, receive the host in your hands. Step aside to consume the host and return to your pew as directed by ushers. Those unable to receive Holy Communion in the hand may come forward to receive a blessing. The body of Christ. Our communion hymn number 6.4, Let Us Be Bread.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join with me in praying the prayer of Pope Francis to Mary for help and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O Mary, you always shine in our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Our missioning hymn, number 480, Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved was great. 